uh, let's say I have more freedom to do coding. We didn't uh, uh, sun and, and in MySQL, the last two years we were focusing on doing the Maria storage engine as a replacement for InnoDB. So actually I was coding a lot there and uh, except the, the, I got to pause the, the last uh, nine months in sun when I feel it's more important to try to get the engineering back on track and getting MySQL more involved in the community and actually get people to stay in sun. So I spent a lot of time in doing that. Uh, but um, nowadays uh, uh, I do basically three things. I try to keep everybody in company more or less on track in and I have Hendrik to help me and other people. And uh, then I do some coding, I do a lot of reviews, actually looking at the community, talking with all the different um, parts of the community, uh, and where, like um, Percona, uh, our Delta, and lots of indiv individuals, actually a lot of former MySQL employees, who are sending us patches. I one of the first to review those and add in those, and also do lots of changes to make them more adaptable. And then there's a lot of changes in future MySQL versions that I have rewritten that was never released. So I've taken those and added those back in MariaDB. So I spent actually a far amount of, uh, co of coding uh, time. And I, I feel nice, nice. I'm by heart a coder and is uh, trying to organize things. Uh, I can do that, but uh, I love to spend time to solve problems that other people find extremely difficult. Uh, we are still using Bazaar because MySQL is using Bazaar, and we have. A, the, Bazaar is a good tool. It's, we need to keep up with what they, they are doing. But um, one of the problems with uh, MySQL was that the, the whole infrastructure to do builds was closed uh, source by them. They never released anything. And uh, we, being on the outside, are trying to duplicate the efforts to do releases. We didn't have anything. So we took one of the open source um, projects, BuildBot, and did uh, basically spend almost one year uh, extending it to be able to do builds um, of MySQL, and we released all the things that we did open source. And like um, Christian Nielsen likes to say that before uh, we had a church that said that you could work anywhere at MySQL. We have changed that to you can work anywhere on MySQL because no MySQL development is truly free. It's a democratic command, so, uh, so I, I'm the head. I said I said the direction, but uh, if enough people disagree, they can overrule me, and I feel good about that because uh, lots of people say that I'm st stubborn, have a loud voice, and. Uh, you can call me a little bit impatient because I like to do this decision fast. But uh, I like to ha be able to use the total knowledge in the company so that somebody who is uh, more, have more insight in certain event, they, have a, they are able to stop me and actually stop any decision and saying that we need to take a pause and think about that. And that's the democracy that we have kind of established that. Everybody have the right to, to have a say. We actually are forced by the company rules to listen to everyone. Actually, both. Because uh, if I really believe in, uh, in something, the only way I can have my way is actually to get other people to agree to it. Or then you come up with a compromise. I actually like compromises, because in that case, you get the best of both worlds. So in the, I like to do, get, have a good argument to find a perfect compromise that both persons can live with. I would hate to have a company where you overrule people and say that we go this way, and then you get people so unhappy they, they will leave. I'm trying to create an atmosphere where people will want to stay forever. And that's important for me. I feel for the people I work with. In most cases, actually, people are uh, like-minded. So we have, have been, the, the people employed by the company is people have worked for, in most cases, for the last 10, 15 years. I mean, that's the core MySQL programmer who knows everything about development. Lots of us are geeks. And um, when you, uh, the most of the compromises comes from technical parts. And when you're a geek and looking at from a technical point, uh, it's very easy to find a way to define which is the best solution. Either you do a benchmark 
or then you look at the code and see which code is cleaner and shorter and more, more, more easy to maintain. So we actually have pretty few arguments. It's more a question about uh, people don't really wanting to do something specific. specific. And in, this, in some cases, we just tell people that they don't have to do that. For example, we come here at a conference, we had one person said that he refused to come to the US. We said, fine, we don't, you don't have to. Apart from him, all, every single other engineering from my company is here and uh, promoting O'Reilly and MySQL. I like people who are passionate because they care uh, both for the product and actually for people uh, around you. So that is, I would say, my criteria number one. Of course, they also need to know uh, the code uh, and uh, be able to do amazing things with coding. But passionate is, is, is more important because if you don't care, you never be able to deliver good. The problem with passionate people is also that they are the most difficult people. Because if you don't satisfy their passion, they are held to deal with. But, but uh, that also uh, makes it pretty interesting to lead a company when people come and tell you that everything you do is wrong. We can never do this. This is totally stupid. Then you ask them, so what's wrong? Yeah, you did this little announcement without asking me. OK, uh, next time we'll ask. Oh, then everything's fine. And that's about passion. So people can get upset about little, small things. But actually, I like that environment because I'm like that myself. I can very quickly get very upset, but I also cool down very, very fast. Free time. I have heard the expression, but uh, I don't have free time. Uh, I always worked long times, uh, long days. Um, I do spend a little bit of time with the family each day, and that, that kind of a routine I have. So uh, when I wake up, I work, and, uh, and basically until, my, until I have to do dinner, I'm the one who do all the uh, cooking at home, and then I go back to work, and then I watch a movie with the, with the family, basically. And after the movie, they go to bed, I continue working. And so the free time, I do have a little bit of free time when I do the cooking and watch the movie. And on, on the weekends, one day I see friends. A part of that, I was working. And, and I have so many different projects going at the same time, so I, I don't have time to get bored. I like to cook. I uh, have done cooking since I was 15, which is a longer time than I want to remember. And um, I've been to a lot of good restaurants, but there's always been something that is missing, that, that I thought that I could do that better. And uh, now when we have an opportunity, we have the intention to, uh, me and some of my friends, uh, create the best restaurant in Finland uh, with a totally new concept. And, uh, do what people would like a restaurant to be, but they don't know how, how it should be. So we are going to del deliver experiences, uh, not only food. We will not have. A, we will get rid of all those things that cause problems in restaurant. Because when you come to a restaurant, where do, does your time go? You are there. You are very hungry. You get the menu, and then you are there with your fr some friend who can never decide what he wants. So remove the menus. You don't need those. We can decide better for you what you want. 